Welcome to the Guitar Breakdown, where we take name brand guitars and push them to the limit to help make you a more informed consumer, even if that means we have to destroy them. From tuner to tailpiece, we'll tell you everything that you need to know. Today we're testing the Paul Reed Smith Model P20 Parlor Guitar, coming in at $580 if it's firmly in the entry level category. The guitar will be judged in three different categories and awarded points based off how well it performs, with a maximum of 150 points available. At the end of the video, the guitar will receive a breakdown score and we'll see how it stacks up against the competition. Alright folks, the first thing that we need to talk about are the features that come with the P20 guitar. And the big outstander to me is the fact that it comes with a genuine bone saddle and nut on the guitar. And that's just not something that you see in this price point ever. And it's also going to save you some money from having to upgrade that in the future. So just big kudos to Paul Reed Smith for including it with that right out of the gate. The next thing that it includes, if you get the guitar with the E designation, the P20E, is that it comes with a pickup system in it. And this one in this case is just a nice, good, solid pickup. It's called the Fishman GT1 pickup system and it's a piezo standard style pickup that goes underneath the saddle there. And it has a volume and tone control inside the sound hole. Nice and easy to access. And I also think that it's a cool feature that you can actually access the battery straight here from the bottom. That makes it nice and easy. Um, the tuning machines on the guitar, they're not stamped with anything, so I'm not sure who makes them, if Paul Reed Smith manufactures them in-house, but I will say that they have a nice A vintage look, which is cool. And they have plastic buttons on them and a chrome finish, but they just have a very uh, smooth feel to them. So that's that's a, a, a nice uh, thumbs up on that. And the last thing that I would say is that it's not marketed as a uh, feature of the guitar, but the fact that it comes with a real genuine ebony bridge and fingerboard is uh, not something that you'll often find in this price range. And the fingerboard itself is actually bound, which is uh, uh, an upgrade in most cases, but in this case it comes factory. And it has these uh, bird inlays on the fingerboard, which are just kind of tying into the old Paul Reed Smith heritage uh, of having birds on the fretboard. And not bad for an SC line guitar, I will say. All right, the next thing that we need to talk about is the playability on this guitar. So the first thing I want to mention is kind of the technical specs of the neck. It has a 24.72 inch scale length, which is about what you would find on a Gibson actually, and slightly shorter than what you would find on a standard 14 fret Martin. Uh, it has a 1.7 inch nut, which is just slightly narrower than you find in the kind of almost standard these days, 1.75 inch nut. So those things combined, actually pair really nicely with the parlor sized guitar. Um, when we purchased the guitar, we made sure that we asked the music store we bought it from if, if this was how they received the guitar directly from Paul Reed Smith. And they said yes, so this guitar has not been adjusted at all. Um, so this is how they received it. And so the reason I mention that is because I do think that the action on the guitar is a little bit high. It might be as simple as a truss rod adjustment. It might need a saddle adjustment, but the reason I mention that is because I am finding that as we move up the neck, the guitar definitely playable, but it definitely is a little higher than I'd like it to be. And because of that, what you end up with is a little bit of an intonation issue. If we play a G down here and a G up here, you can hear that there's just some slight waviness inside the sound. And that's pretty typical on high action guitars because you have to push the string down so much. Uh, you end up with some intonation issues. Nothing major, but definitely part of the playability of the guitar right out of the gate. Um, besides that, man, you know, it's it's pretty good. Um, the fact that it has a uh, bound fretboard makes it nice because it feels like it's slightly rolled over here and makes it nice and quick feeling. Um, but not a whole lot of complaints there at all. Nothing that you couldn't uh, adjust. All right, the next thing that we need to talk about is the sound of this guitar. Obviously, that's what most of you care about, and you should. Um, what we're going to be doing to demo this is use the Zoom H6 recorder, and it is about six inches away from the sound hole using the XY microphone, so you guys are going to get accurate representation of what it sounds like, hopefully. Well, first thing to note is that it obviously is a parlor guitar, and it's a mahogany topped, it has a solid mahogany top, 
that you can't see underneath this black finish. Uh, a mahogany sides that are laminated and mahogany back that is laminated, as well as a mahogany neck. So it's a super, super mahogany heavy guitar. So even if this was a full size guitar, mahogany tends to uh, make a more bright sounding guitar, more mid rangey. And so you combine that with a small body size of the parlor, and what you end up with is kind of what you would expect. <laughs> got really nice sustain but almost no bottom end so if you are looking for a guitar that has that big giant full sound this is probably not the guitar for you but you really should never expect that out of a parlor guitar it's probably a guitar that you could expect as just kind of one to keep by your couch one to take to the beach with you something to learn on as a beginner guitar um, but yeah so what we'll do is we're gonna run through all of the chords starting with E major running all the way through and back to E again in the open position and then I'll just play a couple of licks on it to give you just a rough idea of what it sounds like <laughs> But what I really am surprised with is the amount of sustain that the guitar has. It has a nice, really focused mid-range on it. I'll do a little, uh, some licks here for you. that the one thing I noticed is obviously there are some slight intonation issues and I think that that just once again comes from the slightly higher action that's on the guitar so uh, I don't want to harp on that too much because that is something that is adjustable but if you don't know anything about how to do that on your guitar it is something that you might need to have done but yeah sounds pretty good considering it's a parlor guitar doesn't sound great because it's a parlor guitar all right the last thing that we need to talk about is the case and like most guitars in this price range, in the entry level range, it has a soft bag that comes with it. But in this case, I will say that this one is pretty dang nice. Uh, one of the standout features to me is that it has these backpack strap system on it that is really well done. Um, good stitching on it. It seems like it would probably last you a good long time. I know that with me, with soft bags, I do like to have two straps so that I can wear it like a backpack. That makes it nice. Plenty of storage on here so that you can put, you know, anything that you want. Literally, you could probably fit a small guitar stand inside of here in his lower pocket. You have an upper pocket up here so that you can put smaller items inside of it. And uh, the padding on this case is actually actually pretty nice. Uh, a lot of times on cheaper bags that come with some of these guitars, there's almost no padding, but this one offers uh, a fair amount of it, especially some down here at the bottom, which is really important for when you set it down. And it has a um, piece of Velcro strapping inside here so that you can um, cradle the neck nicely. So, not too bad, not too bad. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is apply our scratch resistance test to the guitar. We do this by using a wad of keys and belt buckles that we're gonna aggressively rub against the guitar for 60 seconds to simulate just kind of lifetime abuse. All right, so after doing it to the back, uh, we were left pretty impressed. It left almost no scratches whatsoever on the, on the back of the guitar. We then rinse and repeat by doing this to the top of the guitar. And just like the back, 
we were pretty astonished. There was almost no scratches on the top whatsoever. So that was pretty impressive. The next thing that we do is actually do a short hardness test on this guitar using a D scale. And you can see we achieved a 76 hardness on the back. Maximum rating of 72 on the sides. And an 88 on the top of the guitar. Okay, let's move on to our dent resistance test. And we're gonna do this by dropping a one inch steel carbide ball 18 inches onto the top and back of the guitar. This carbide ball weighs 143 grams. We're gonna start off by doing this to the back of the guitar. The back received a dent that was only 0 0.05 millimeters in depth. The top of the guitar surprisingly only received a dent that was almost zero, unmeasurable, which is incredibly impressive. Now let's move on to our liquid resistance test. And this is a test that we've designed to help simulate some of the liquids that the guitar may be exposed to over the lifetime of its use. We'll start off by applying some off bug spray. and a 15 SPS suntan lotion, distilled fresh water, salt water, vodka, and then lastly, some beer. We're then going to let this sit on the guitar overnight for 24 hours and we'll come back and see how the finish held up. So here we are the next morning after about 24 hours of it sitting there and you can see it didn't actually do much so let's wipe it off. There's where the bug spray was, just a slight hazing. Suntan lotion left almost no mark. The water was invisible. The salt water left no mark whatsoever. The vodka left no mark whatsoever. And the beer left no mark whatsoever, which is pretty impressive. So that held up very, very well. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna do is our string tension resistance test. And we'll do this by applying two different sets of strings to the guitar and seeing how much the neck moves under that new tension. We'll start with light gauge Daddario's, which actually have 160.5 pounds of tension. And we will set the neck perfectly straight with those strings on and tuned to pitch. So we're gonna get this gauge set to zero to ensure that the neck is perfectly straight. We'll then remove those strings and then put the heavy gauge strings on, which have 212.8 pounds of tension and see how much the neck moves under that new tension. Remembering that we've applied 52 more pounds of tension with these new strings on and it only moved three thousandths of an inch, which was really surprising for us and a really great thing. Okay, next we're gonna do our stand failure resistance test and this is designed to help simulate what it's like if your guitar falls off its guitar stand onto a concrete floor and we'll do this by dropping it on the back first. All right, now in slow-mo. Brutal. Okay, now we'll do the same thing and drop it on the front of the guitar. And again in slow-mo. So after doing this, we were really surprised to see that the guitar held up really well. Just a small little dent on the back of the headstock and just a small chip in the nut of the guitar right where the strings go through it on the front. So nothing major there. It would have survived just fine. Just knocked it out of tune. All right, the first thing in this category we'll talk about are the trim and joinery quality. And that pertains to how well is the guitar put together on the outside, its fit and finish. And in this case, everything looks perfect. I don't see any issues anywhere on the guitar. 
will quickly cover the quality of the finish on the guitar and I will say that as we saw it's very durable and there's no obvious defects it's crystal clear and it's a nice satin finish that should last for years and it actually comes in a tobacco sunburst color if you're interested in that as well as the natural mahogany so you have a few options to choose from Let's talk about the fret quality. And as we mentioned, it is a bound fretboard and can be more complicated to do right. And in this case, it's done perfect. No issues whatsoever. All right, let's move on to the interior build quality of this guitar. And this is where the fun really begins for me because what we get to do is cut these guitars right open and really reveal how they are made. So Paul Reed Smith advertises this guitar as being built with an X-Brace hybrid system so it's going to be x braced as well as fan braced on the lower section so i'm anxious to see what that looks like um, we just use a little japanese pool saw to cut this open by hand and there she is in all her glory as you can see it does in fact have that hybrid bracing system which is pretty cool uh, we can see the dovetail joint in the neck block which is real nice and tight and kind of as I expected on this uh, entry level guitar, it is pretty sloppy in here. Lots of glue squeeze out all over the place. The braces are almost just kind of thrown in their general location. They're not properly jointed together. So there are gaps where there should not be gaps. And they're not, it's not voiced. It's essentially just the braces are glued on raw. And you know, not a big deal there. I don't think that that's going to affect the longevity of the guitar or the durability of the guitar, but it does affect how the guitar sounds and does leave room for improvement. The back of the guitar on the other hand is really very well put together and you can see that it is nicely sanded. There's no glue squeeze out and it's presented well. I don't think there's a coincidence there. That's because you can see this through the sound hole and obviously they don't want people to see glue everywhere. Um, the pickup system is installed very nicely, really nice and clean, and I don't see any issues going forward with the pickup system. So, kind of what we expected on the inside of the guitar. Now let's see how the Paul Reed Smith P20 Parlor Guitar stacks up against the competition. Starting with the daily score. The features on this guitar are pretty well equipped, and it comes with a bone nut and saddle and bound fretboard, so it receives a 6 out of 10. As far as playability is concerned, it does leave a little bit to be desired and has some intonation issues, so it receives a 4 out of 10. The sound of the guitar is what we would expect with a parlor guitar with a mahogany top and laminate back and sides, and it receives a 3 out of 10. The case quality is pretty good, although it is a soft bag, so it receives a 5 out of 10. And the hardware on this guitar was really good as well, but we don't know the manufacturer and whether they'll last for a long time, so it receives a 5 out of 10 for a total score of 23 out of 50. Moving on to the lifestyle category. This guitar's scratch resistance was pretty amazing and after a minute of abuse, received almost no scratches. So it gets a 10 out of 10. On the liquid resistance front, I was really surprised that even the bug spray almost had no effect on it and receives a 10 out of 10. The fall resistance of the guitar was equally impressive, and even upon hitting the ground only had the slightest little ding on it, so it gets a 10 out of 10. The ability of the guitar to resist string tension was really good too, and going from light gauge to heavy gauge strings almost had no effect on it, so it receives a 10 out of 10. And the dent resistance on the guitar was superb, so it receives a 10 out of 10 as well, making this category a perfect score of 50. Moving on to the heritage category. This guitar is appointed with nice herringbone trim throughout the whole guitar, and I saw no issues whatsoever with its joints, and it receives an eight out of 10. The finish on the guitar handled everything that we could throw at it as incredibly durable and had no visual defects in it whatsoever, so it receives a 10 out of 10. The frets on the guitar, although I don't know the alloy that they're made out of, really well installed and very level, and the guitar played great, so it receives a nine out of 10. The interior of the guitar left the most to be desired out of everything we looked at. It had a lot of glue squeeze out, it had overspray inside of it, and half of the braces weren't even glued into the right spot, so it only received a 4 out of 10. As far as brand value on this guitar, it is a Paul Reed Smith, but it is part of their SE line, and Paul Reed Smiths are more well known for their electric guitars, so it only receives a 5 out of 10. For a total score of 36 points. If you add it all up, we get a breakdown score of 109. 
Not bad for an entry-level guitar, and I think it'll stack up very nicely against the competition. This guitar offers a great value for the brand and comes in both electric and straight acoustic versions, and we think that it's a good purchase if you're looking for a small guitar that can go anywhere with you and hold up to just about anything you can throw at it. We hope you enjoyed this video and we'll be doing a lot more of these in the future. Make sure that you like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.